Good morning, my darlings. Welcome to a new vlog. I'm not gonna lie to you, I woke up in a pretty bad mood this morning, but um, I think the holiday blues have well and truly started to emerge and we had a personal training session had a bit of a bit of a headache throughout the whole session but i think that that actually was more to do with coffee withdrawal symptoms than holiday blues i was listening to a podcast yesterday from a guy that actually one of you guys recommended called dr andrew Huberman and he was talking about the addictive effects of coffee and how coffee gives you these positive feelings and it's actually those feelings that you're more addicted to than the caffeine itself and Simon and I were talking about um, coffee withdrawals and I think maybe that was the source of my headache this morning. We have got some meetings today with our wedding planner and a few of our wedding suppliers so it is going to be a good day so I'm going to turn it around and um, feel good. So morning pamper routine, I'm going to do my IPL, my hair removal, I've shaved, I've exfoliated, I'm primed and ready to go. I think I'm going to do um, at home gel nails this morning as well. And the reason I'm still makeup free is because I'm also going to do my LED intense light therapy this morning as well. So a full hour of pampering before Jen, our wedding planner, gets here a little bit later. As always, the first thing I'm gonna do is my IPL. This time I'm gonna be using my Kenzie Ice device, which I keep very niftily in this little Dior box. It just looks absolutely gorgeous on my shelves, but inside, where there once was, I think, a pair of Dior sunglasses, I now have my Kenzie device. And this one here is fantastic specifically for those slightly more delicate areas. This very clever, can you see, ooh, oh, telltale sign, bit of, a bit of fake tan on my hands from the facial drops that I've been using. But yeah, you can see here, it's got kind of like a cooling plate here. So I personally have never found laser hair removal or IPL to be a sensitive experience, but particularly if you have got much darker hair than I do, then some people do say it feels a little bit like a warm spoon on the back of your hand, like that kind of feeling. Not painful by any stretch, but if you do feel anything, then this device with the cooling plate is fantastic. So I am going to do a quick whiz over with this. It literally takes me 10 minutes to do all the areas that I want to do. I started doing this um, at the beginning of lockdown, as I've mentioned, and when you first get your at-home IPL device, which by the way, I still do have the discount code for, it's actually now changed, so it is FM20, and that will get you 20% off your device from Kenzie. I'll leave the website linked down below. Could not recommend this any more highly. Start now if you want to be smooth and hair free in time for summer. I'd highly recommend doing it at this time of year. It takes, I would say, a couple of months up to around 12 weeks until you suddenly realize that you don't need to shave anymore. Particularly if it's more from a visual point of view. I think I said last time that I would say the hair on my legs, which was always fairly fine, now it's more of just like a peach fuzz. And I would say the amount of hair, like the actual hairs, there are a lot less of them. But for me, the more noticeable areas are my underarms and my bikini area. I'll quickly show you how I do on my underarms. It takes literally less than 30 seconds. <laughs> it's amazing. Even if you just were to buy one of these for your underarms, it would be so worth it because it's just annoying. You know, each to their own, but for me personally, in summer, I want to be able to just grab any top from my wardrobe and pop it on and not have to worry about whether I've got cleanly shaven underarms. For me, the best thing about this is the long lastingness of the results. I'm now a couple of years down the line. So for me at the moment, it's just maintenance. But after about 12 weeks, as I said, you'll start to be like, oh, I don't need to worry about shaving anymore because I'm pretty much hair free all the time. But I would say the great thing about buying one of these as opposed to going into a salon, as well as the huge monetary saving and time saving is the fact that you have this device at home so it's so easy to maintain. I think it's like a rumour or a an old wives tale that this kind of hair removal is completely permanent, like you go and you do it for six weeks or something and then it's completely permanent. I don't think that is true, I mean our bodies continue to regenerate, our hair follicles, their job is to create hair. So the word permanent I don't know if I would use that word when talking about this. 
but for me zapping just once a month and as I said it takes less than 10 minutes I just stick a podcast on is all I need to do to maintain it so for me that is such a good investment in my time investment in my money compared to other methods of hair removal I love the fact that you're always cleanly shaven because you actually shave prior to doing this even when you are like I am now at the peach fuzz stage you just completely make sure that and also shaving does help to prep the skin it's a light form of exfoliation as well so you don't have to wait for a period of regrowth like you do with epilating or waxing which are also just excruciatingly painful so no downtime for me personally no pain um, and so much more comfortable and affordable and time-saving than going to a salon so yes I am a huge fan of this method of hair removal it does come with an ultra long cable but I'm just gonna plug it in here <laughs> okay I thought I would just quickly pop on a different top so that I don't reveal too much in my dressing gown you might be able to hear a little whirring noise and that is the noise of the IPL device being turned on and then all you have to do is press this middle button here and it takes literally seconds You can actually go over the area a few times if you want to. I would say especially when you're first getting started. For me, as I said, this is just maintenance, so once is enough. You can also increase the strength of the zaps. And there we go, that was about <laughs> 30 seconds to have hair-free underarms all year round how amazing is that and i've shown you in the past it takes me less than 10 minutes to do my legs bikini line and i'll just stick on a podcast and it's so easy it's literally the easiest and simplest and most effective part of my beauty routine so hopefully a lot of you guys have invested already but i will leave my discount code fm20 and the link to buy on kenzie down below and as always if you have got any questions about this form of hair removal then consider me your fairy godmother for hair removal <laughs> how fabulous and you can let me know down below if you do have any questions so what i'm going to do next is pop my hair in my heatless curls so they can be doing their fang for the rest of my morning's beauty routine <laughs> Okay, my darlings, hair is up in the heatless curls. We've got a little antennae here to get radio signal. So I'm going to do my nails. For the last week or, well, not even week, five days, I've had the Orly Nail Trition kind of growth treatment on my nails to help, helpfully, hopefully help them to strengthen. So the first thing I need to do is take that off in my little gel nail pouch. I keep all of my gel at home nail stuff in here. I have got a very bougie little pot of Dior nail varnish remover and it's totally ridiculously over the top but um, I received it in a PR and the only nail varnish that I ever really take off using normal remover is nail growth treatments. So I'll start by doing that to prep the nails and then colour wise I actually saw this combination come up on my explore page on Instagram and this is quite tragic but I've been excited to recreate this ever since <laughs> I saw it come off my Instagram. So I really want to do like a gorgeous natural pinky shade, shock horror, literally the only shade I ever wear on my nails. So what I'm going to do using my manicurist collection here we go these are the exact shades they used in the picture that i saw on instagram i'm going to do two coats of pale rose and then one coat of milky white hopefully it'll look absolutely gorgeous um i have got so many beautiful pinky shades at the moment i want to try out all of them but that is the combination that i'm going to go with today so i need to find a top coat number three and a base coat 
Oh, actually, for the base, I'm going to use, this is the first time I've tried this, so hopefully it works out, the My Gel Builder Gel that I got on Look Fantastic. I'm going to use this as the base coat, again, because my nails are quite weak, so hopefully this will help strengthen. So, I'm going to find something to watch on YouTube in the meantime, because unlike doing my laser, this does take longer, I would say, than if you were to do it professionally in a salon, because obviously while one hand is setting, you can't be painting the other hand like you would in a salon. So realistically, this will take me probably about 40 minutes, I would say. It's exactly 12 o'clock now, so we'll see what the time is when I finish. Um, yeah, it's only because you can only do one hand at a time, so it takes a little bit longer. I don't do anywhere near the amount of prep that they would do in a salon, but I will push down my cuticles, do a little bit of filing. So, what can I watch in the meantime? Do you know who I haven't watched in a while? Is the Anna edit. So I'm going to watch her plan with me for ooh, 2023. It's a 27 minute long video, so I'll probably get to the end and need something else to watch, but let's get cracking. darlings it is now 12 43 i would say i spent like five minutes deciding what video i was going to watch so that took 40 minutes to do my nails from start to finish and i am so pleased with how they look so if you're wondering what this is by the way i think on the last few days of holiday i got sun cream stuck underneath my rings and I think it kind of burned the skin a little bit, so I'm going ring free for a little while. I'm going to pop loads of Savlon on here tonight. It's quite sore. Boohoo. Um, but yeah, super thrilled with how the nails came out. I showed you, I paused um, the time lapse to show you how it looked before I added the milky white layer. So it looks really lovely just with pale rose and if you're doing a french manicure and you want it to be a little bit less opaque then i think two layers of pale rose is wonderful i did two layers of the my gel builder gel in the shade light pink first but it was really natural it just basically looked like clear nail varnish and then i did do one layer and they're really thin almost watery polishes which i think is great because it encourages you to do thinner layers set them and then maybe do more layers as opposed to fewer thicker layers so a really nice thin layer of milky white and then of course the top coat my top tips for making these manicurist manicures last longer like around two weeks is to just make sure you overset. so what i do for the base coats is i do 99 seconds and then for the next coats i do 60 seconds but what i do is once i've done the first hand the next time, every time I put the hand in that's curing, I also put the other hand in just to get like a bonus cure. And then you're basically double curing each set. And I just find that that helps it last a little bit longer. And I popped on some of the Manicurist Ulvet nail care oil afterwards, makes them nice and glossy and hydrates your cuticles. Manicurist as a brand, it is the first gel at home plant-based nail brand so the products are really clean um which is really important to me the colors that they use are beautiful they actually use this brand at dalesford as well if you get your nails done there and it's just so aesthetically beautiful i love everything that they do so huge fan of that really really happy with this manicure i think it looks absolutely gorgeous so there we go if it'll focus i'll show you from this side as well and i've just remembered i believe I still have a manicurist 15% discount code so if that is still active you'll find that linked down below
and some more. So this room is going to become my little spa facial room for the next half an hour. The sun is pouring in, it is absolutely gorgeous, and I'm going to set up my LED face mask, Ooh, if I can find it. minutes later that was a fantastic red light and blue light session I thought I would do red and blue because I've got a few little blemishes starting to appear and blue light is fantastic for that red light fantastic for tricking the skin into thinking that it's damaged so that it goes into repair mode which is fantastic for the skin producing more collagen it's a much more effective way of getting more collagen in the skin than, you know, like face creams that contain collagen. I don't think our skin absorbs it that way. Um, so great for just getting a glow. Basically everything that you want your skin to be glowing, less wrinkly, more plump and juicy. That is what red light and, um, and blue light, but mostly red light therapy is amazing for. The device that I just used then is like a salon professional one and you can buy it, I'll leave it linked down below, you can buy it, but it is very expensive. But of course, my current body silicone mask, you can use that three times a week and get very, very similar results, and it's far more affordable. So I guess I've shared with you three things that I like to do from home that you can pay a lot more to get done professionally in a salon, but I think you get as good a results doing at home, whether it is laser IPLing my legs, gel manicure at home and an at home LED facial. So my post LED skincare, the only thing that I do is pop on some of the Clé de Peau Hydro Softening Lotion and I pop some of that on a cotton pad. This is just more of a refresher. Obviously no part of that device is actually touching my skin, but I would do this as well if I was using the current body silicone one. It's just quite refreshing and also really, really hydrating. Now our wedding planner Jen is going to be here in about half an hour so I need to very quickly pop on some makeup. This is also fantastic for prepping the skin for makeup. A bit of By Terry lip balm, a little bit of the Bobbi Brown Serum Mist. Also really nice after you've done an IPL, just super duper hydrating. Now I probably don't have time to talk through my makeup with you so I... <laughs> just inhaled a load of that serum. <laughs> I am just going to leave you on a time lapse. I'm going to carry on listening to the podcast I was listening to while IPLing. It is again the caffeine. This guy's podcast, they're great, but they're so long. This is now going to be the third time that I'm listening to this podcast. It's, oh my gosh, I think it's two and a half hours long. Yeah, because I've got an hour left and I've already listened to an hour and 22 minutes. It's called Using Caffeine to Optimize Mental and... I can't actually see the rest of the title from Dr. Andrew Huberman. So yeah, very interesting, but I wish he could be a little bit more precise. So I'm gonna carry on listening.
which is quite a normal <laughs> makeup look for me. A very quick everyday makeup. Um, to be honest, I don't normally spend 15 minutes, but there we go. The heatless curls turned out pretty good. Hopefully it will last. I just popped in a little bit of hairspray and used only my Tangle Teaser Wide Tooth Comb because I do feel if I use anything else, then they just drop. But we are now three weeks of not using anything heated on my hair, which is amazing. I'm not saying I'm never going to use heat ever again, but I feel like my hair is looking healthier. It certainly feels healthier. And when you can get curls like this with heatless silk sausages, then why not? So I did wash my hair first thing this morning, um, and then I dried it to like 99% dry, I would say. And then I think I had the heatless silk sausage in for maybe two hours. I don't know whether having the silk sausage in while I'm underneath the UV thing would affect it. Probably not. I don't think UV light affects hair. But if anyone knows anything to the contrary to that, that would be really interesting, wouldn't it? That could be such a good beauty hack. Anyway, I need to put something warmer on because this is not warm enough. Maybe I'll show you some sneak peeks from our meeting. But if not, we'll have a big wedding catch up afterwards. Sorry, me again, just very quickly. I will leave all of the beauty products that I just applied linked down below alongside any discount codes that I might have. There is of course a discount directory on the blog where you can go to always check what we have, but I know I'll get questions about the lipstick. It is my everyday favorite, which is notably nude by Elizabeth Arden. It is just the perfect balmy pink. And I used it with the Beauty Pie lip liner in the shade vanilla nude that is my current go-to lip combo that i have been loving it for a good few months so i've just quickly made a coffee date and banana and almond and various other things smoothie before everyone arrives for our wedding meetings but i have something exceptionally exciting to share with you this is the march edition of house and garden magazine and it features a very special model <laughs> look at this so you might remember the shoot day a little while ago I showed you a few behind the scenes and Dickie was the star of the show so this is the new outdoor furniture from George Smith so perfectly modelled by my handsome boy oh my goodness look how fluffy he is he hadn't been groomed in weeks before this which is just I mean he just adds to the comfort factor of the furniture I think he's the best model in the entire world. And he hasn't got a clue. Not a sausage. We won't be having any diva behavior, thank you, just because you've been featured in a Condé Nast magazine, my boy. Do you have anything to say to your loyal fans? <laughs> Nothing going on up there, is it, Chick-fil-A? <laughs> we can't be brains and beauty. Yeah, we tried to like just be I quite think. like these as well to be fair. Oh, that's lovely. I think Quince and Quip. Yeah, they love that. That's one. nice, isn't it? So, quite simple. So exciting. Ooh, yeah. that is lovely. I think that's perfect. Can you pick up that green one again, please, Charm? Yeah. Oh, wow! Well, it's the same company that we've oh, got. Oh, that's so got cool. How could we use that and the um, white ones? Well, I think, I think these ones are more for like displaying food, for example. They'd be quite useful. So you've already got stocks of all of these, have you? Yeah. Wow. Well, oh my goodness. Oh, that's so beautiful. Do you have anything like he was on about for those also? Is there a recycle, like more of a recycle glass, where these are just clear? That is on the Oh, wow. Yeah. That's super Yeah, that, that's more hazardous, I'd say. Yeah. Well. No, I, I love these. those ones, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Some sort of candles. If we're gonna, um, that's a nice colour. Yeah. Yeah. But I think if there's any way of finding something with a bit of texture, really nice. Oh, that's a thing. A bit vivid. Yeah, I think these are these. I don't know if these are other colours. Oh, the 
soup spoons are nice because we don't own the soup spoons, we've got so our own soup spoons. Yeah. So what do you mean? Hello again, my darlings. It is literally like six hours later. It is starting to get dark outside, as you might be able to tell from this rather blue lighting. But we have made so many decisions for our wedding. It has literally been literally been a six hour wedding meeting at the house here today. We had our wedding planners here. We had um, the marquee company. We had our caterers here. So yeah, a lot has been decided, which is very, very exciting. And I know I've not really shared too much wedding info here on my channel, but I figured sharing a few details, if any of you guys are wedding planning, then it might be quite fun um, and it's not taking anything away from like the big reveal of our special day to share a few of the details with you. So I thought I would share um, a few of the things that we decided today. So it's no surprise that we are obviously getting married here at our house. I think you guys have already figured that out. You come out of our kitchen door, you look down the garden and we've got the most beautiful church and we've got enough room for two really big and beautiful markets here at the house. What I wish I'd known <laughs> is that having a, a wedding at home is most definitely not a cost <laughs> saving exercise compared to friends that I know that are getting married in venues. When you think about it you literally have to rent everything from, I mean that's the reason that we've basically put so much outdoor lighting in but then also you've got to have lighting from where you're eating to the toilets. We're going to have to put some kind of nice jute matting down in certain high traffic areas when people are coming in and out of gates and things like that. We've got to have security. Obviously it's our house so um, there's that to think about. Generators, you have to rent everything obviously from like the chairs, the tables, catering tents, ovens, <laughs> crockery, everything has to be rented so yeah if you're thinking about getting married at home from a cost saving point of view <laughs> it is not any cheaper than getting married in a venue but for Charlie and I we know we're such homebodies that there is nowhere that I would rather get married than here at our house so I am going to share with you a few of the details that we decided today because it's very very exciting the only thing that this is going to be a bit of a spoiler for is for the people that are actually coming to our wedding so anyone that's watching that's coming to our wedding if you don't want any spoilers just don't watch the rest of this video so we had a really fantastic discussion with our caterer we are keeping it as local as possible as you can imagine in fact i think everything that we have planned so far from my dress which i haven't actually finally finally decided on my dress yet um, you know, we're not getting French champagne, we're finding an English sparkling wine, we are very close to finding an English rosé that we absolutely love, and we live in an area where the agriculture and the farming is so good, and given that Charlie and I love to support local, we are of course using local suppliers for everything possible, even things like when we were comparing luxury toilets, we were like, who's the most local? But we have got, for example, honey from the village. In fact, most of our food is coming from like a 10 mile radius from where we live, which is absolutely amazing. There are so many farms that grow amazing organic salads. Um, I guess, we're another spoiler, we are having a kitchen garden risotto as our starter and a lot of the ingredients will be from my kitchen garden. Um, I guess the risotto rice <laughs> will probably be imported from somewhere a bit further afield but we're really trying to keep it as local, sustainable and of course organic as possible. We were talking to our caterer about making sure that most if not all of the ingredients are organic, seeing as that's so important to us. Um, we were talking about making sure we get a really good coffee machine as well as Charlie only a few of our guests don't actually drink alcohol so it's really important to us that it's not just like a filter coffee it's a really good quality coffee basically everything that's important to Charlie and I we want our wedding day to be an example of that so yeah but it was those kinds of little details we were sharing today so organic local ingredients there's the Cotswold dairy nearby so things like that cheeses milks yogurts we can get that super locally the honey is literally coming from the village. There is a farmer that lives in 
the top of our village that's doing a lot of the more salady things. I'm going to be hopefully growing enough microgreens and things like radish and carrot in our garden that will be good for canapes and things like that. And we were talking about maybe on the back of the menu, within the menu there's going to be provenance notes so that our guests can find out exactly. I think people will be really amazed. I've never been to a wedding before where I've been able to read that the spinach for the risotto was grown like three miles away or the cream was made from the Cotswold dairy that's just down the road or the gin is from a local company. I've never been to a wedding where there's been that much detail but Charlie's a huge foodie and these things are so important to us so I think that's going to be amazing and I was even thinking how fun it would be to have a sketched map on the back of the wedding menu so people can see where we are and where all the food has been sourced nearby so yeah I thought that was a really fun idea um local rosé oh so something that I need to research and test out with our caterer is obviously our <laughs> midnight snack is going to be a macaroni cheese of course <laughs> it wouldn't be a Josie wedding without macaroni cheese on the menu somewhere I would have it for my main wedding meal if I could but Charlie insisted on something proper for the main course but midnight snack has got to be mac and cheese so I'm going to be trying um, to make a fabulous mac and cheese with more local cheeses. I have made one in the past with the Royal Wright cheese and the Dalesford cheddar but a little bit more, a little bit more tweaking is required for that recipe. Um, I've been given a list of things to grow to make sure we've got enough produce for, I think it's mostly when people are having like the drinks and of course we're going to do kitchen garden inspired cocktails inspired by what's growing what's in the hedgerows at the time seasonally at the time of year that our wedding is luckily it's like the middle of the growing season so there's going to be a lot well middle to end of the growing season so there'll be a lot of produce <laughs> available to choose from even like flower wise I'm trying to make sure that most if not all of the flowers have been grown locally, grown sustainably and a lot of the foliage will be literally <laughs> sourced probably mostly by me from the hedgerows and surrounding areas so yeah just trying to keep it as local as possible. Little details again this is maybe showing <laughs> too much information but we would love for anyone that's um, crew, <laughs> it's not staff, it's wedding crew, uh, to be wearing green aprons. So I'm going to be having a little look for some nice um, green linen aprons that I can buy online. So if anyone knows anywhere, then let me know. I did show you a few clips a second ago. Our wedding planner actually has her own company where she rents out like crockery and she also does um, like table linens and candles and things like that for weddings so we made a decision on our plates which is very exciting again if you get married in a venue I don't know if you get these this amount of choice maybe you do I don't know not never got married before but yeah so we decided on our plates and we're gonna have slightly different plates for it's a two-day wedding spoiler alert and we'll have different styles each day we decided on the linen colour for our napkins and our table runners. I don't think any part of our wedding style will come as a surprise to any of you guys. I think Charlie and I have such a strong style and like aesthetic and nothing will come as a surprise. <laughs> we are going to hopefully find some nice antiques that we will decorate the marquees with. Um, it's just going to be like an extension of us, an extension of our home quite literally in the garden. So yeah, it should just feel, you should be able to walk in to our wedding and without anyone even mentioning our names, you should be like, this is a Josie and Charlie wedding. That's the aim. That is, um, that's the aim and I think it's, I think it's very doable. Luckily, all the suppliers and people that we're talking to are people that we know already from the local area so everyone that's going to be there on the day we we know and we love already it's amazing how many of our suppliers are also sausage dog mums <laughs> i think i mentioned this before didn't i but we've definitely manifested and attracted a lot of sausage dog people to be part of our wedding crew which is something else that absolutely warms my heart but on that note what are we going to do with my model of the hour, model of the day, and his elder brother Dexter. If anyone has got any tips on what you can do with your dogs on your wedding day, please let me know. I seem to remember Tiffany Watson on her wedding day employed someone whose literal job was to be the wedding day dog sitter. And 
I wish I could remember that company <laughs> so I need to do some research for someone to like mine to the dogs but also potentially bring them to us for photos during the day I think that would just be so much fun what else have I written in my notebook? Um, oh, so a few things inspired by our recent holiday. We had herbal water while we were on the, the Six Senses in the Maldives, um, and it's basically water infused with herbs. So we're gonna do that from the garden, um, make sure that everyone stays hydrated. We also decided on our glassware today. We've got some really beautiful recycled glass glassware, which is gonna look really lovely. And funnily enough, Jen has actually just got a huge supply of Charingworth crockery, <laughs> which is the crockery that we have had in our house since we moved in. I think Charlie found them as a local company when we first moved in. So the cutlery that we use every single day is actually the cutlery that our guests, <laughs> not the same stuff, it's gonna be like a whole collection, is what our guests will be experiencing on our wedding day. So it's literally, our wedding is like the straw top cottage equivalent of weddings to our house in that guests at our wedding will just be experiencing our life <laughs> so i think that's it just feels really natural it feels very fitting we were talking about um different cocktails so hopefully some maybe like a, a, a bramble a kitchen garden martini something like that and of course espresso martinis after dinner what else oh my gosh there's so much to think about like outdoor furniture um i think we're gonna have i don't know if i'm giving too much away here no <laughs> i think it's also predictable anyway hopefully gonna have some really cool like cattle troughs as our ice buckets and have wines and cocktails and things that people can just go and help themselves to in the cattle troughs um what else can i share with you <laughs> honestly i feel like i'm not keeping i'm not gate gatekeeping anything for our wedding we're trying to also find a fleet of defenders to ferry our guests from their accommodation to where they need to be but we haven't found the right supplier for that yet a lot of places up in scotland rent out defenders but i think they are more for like shoots so they're quite um agricultural which obviously defenders are but i need to try and find out if there's like a bougie defender rental so again if anyone knows anything with regards to that then let me know um and maybe in this vlog actually it depends if i pick up the camera tomorrow as well probably will actually we are going to have a look around a house near here we're not having anyone staying at the house um because <laughs> that's just too many too many beds to change but we are potentially going to have a look around an epic really big house about 15 minutes away from where we live that will maybe be where the bridal charlie's side of the bridal party will stay during the celebrations so hopefully that will be amazing because obviously that's where charlie will get ready for the big day it's where his mom and dad will get ready um the groomsmen so it needs to be really fabulous hopefully i'll be able to maybe show you around that a little bit which will be exciting but yeah we've got a few final decisions that we still need to make we've got as you can imagine yes well to be honest i feel like today we did lock in a lot of the little details but there's still still a few decisions to make but i feel so much better after today i think we made we made a lot of fantastic decisions so now i really need to um sit down and do some emails because i have been off my computer all day but I'm happy to start sharing more wedding content now. I think I've just held off for so long because I've not really had not really had any updates, but there we go. I feel like I've just shared so much information. Wedding overload. So yes, I hope you enjoyed that little wedding update. Now I need to go and tackle some of my, not wedmen, my actual, actual work admin. <laughs> Okay, so after the wedding meeting, Charlie has dashed off to see the chiropractor, so I'm going to do dinner tonight. We've got some pork chops from the butcher, and I'm going to do a kind of leek and spinach and cannelli bean rice. And then we're going to do, I'm going to do some rosemary and black pepper on the pork. Should be quite tasty. I think my mum's coming over for dinner as well, so something nice and nutritious. I'm actually not majorly hungry, as we had quite a lot of Dalesford salads at lunchtime. And we ate quite late, so what originally was going to be a meal for just Charlie and I, I think I can definitely split out the portions to make it enough for the three of us. Maybe a little bit of extra rice. I've not cooked this before, so it's a little bit of trial and error, but full of goodness.